All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story, we've got a physique update from Larry Wheels. Larry Wheels checking in, uh, doing a posing video here. I thought this was a little bit interesting because you typically, you're seeing the workout videos, you're seeing the crazy PRs, the deadlifts, and the bench press from Larry. Uh, but he decided to go a different route and post a physique update at 127 kgs, 280 pounds, looking really lean, actually. For a 280 pound, uh, I guess you could call him a power lifter, not a bodybuilder. I'm wondering now um, if we're going to see Larry compete in a bodybuilding show anytime soon um, with his friend and training partner, Andrew Jack, getting ready for his first competition ever. Andrew looking to be in incredible shape. It kind of makes you wonder um, if that's inspiring Larry to get back on stage. The last time we saw Larry on stage was Nationals. Uh, maybe it was like three years ago already. It's been a while since we've seen Larry um, try his hand at bodybuilding. And I'm wondering based off of this physique update, if we could be seeing Larry get ready for a bodybuilding show anytime soon. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about how Larry is looking here at 280 pounds. And like I said, with Andrew Jacked being Larry's training partner, maybe that makes Larry want to scratch that itch of competing in bodybuilding again. I think personally his physique looks pretty good right now. Maybe we see Larry on a bodybuilding stage sometime soon. Now, another physique update I wanted to talk about in this video, um, Hunter Labrada. Hunter Labrada, as you guys know, had a phenomenal rookie year in 2020. So we're waiting to see how Hunter is going to choose to spend his time in 2021 um, as it relates to qualifying for this year's Mr. Olympia because he is not already qualified. And he posted this update where he said, back to business as usual. I've been slacking on the weekly updates. Hopefully y'all can tell from the picks that I haven't been slacking on doing my actual job. But he says here he is somewhere between 17 and 23 weeks out from his next show. So he says he promises he will announce it soon. So that means for sure we're not going to see him in May. We're not going to see him at the New York Pro. We're not going to see him at the Indy Pro. So probably a show at this point, if he's talking about four months in the future, we're probably going to see him do a show really, really close to the Olympia. Maybe that would be Tampa. Maybe that would be Toronto. I guess we'll see. Um, but this was also interesting because the Mr. Olympia, well, the IFBB, I guess you could say, um, just announced the cutoff date for qualifications for this year's Mr. Olympia. Um, so this is kind of interesting. As you guys know, they recently announced that the Olympia is going to be um, postponed until October 7th. The weekend of October 7th through the 10th will be when the 2021 Mr. Olympia is held. But they just announced that the cutoff date, so even though the Olympia is held in October, there will be a cutoff date to qualify for this year's Mr. Olympia. And that cutoff date is now announced to be Sunday, September 12th. So you have these bodybuilders they have from the first weekend of May up until September 12th to qualify for the Olympia. So that gives you May, June, July, August, and a little bit of September. So somewhere around five months from when these bodybuilding shows start to get in and qualify for the Olympia. So you're going to see a lot of shows happening in that five-month span, and I think you're going to see a lot of your favorite bodybuilders start competing to try to earn that qualification. Because if you go over to the Mr. Olympia qualified competitor list right now, you'll see there's not a lot of guys qualified that you're used to seeing. You've got James Hollingshead, Regan Grimes, Momdoa Elsbae, obviously Big Rami, uh, Brandon Curry, Phil Heath, Hadi Chupin, and William Bonac. So you see a lot of guys missing in there. Um, you've got Rolly Winkler's not in there. Um, Akeem, Hunter, Ian Vier, Cedric McMillan. Um, but another one I want to talk about was Flex Lewis. Flex Lewis, keep in mind, um, Flex got this special invitation last year to compete at the Olympia. Um, and he ended up not doing it because of a shoulder injury. So the interesting thing this year, especially there was a recent interview with Tyler Manning where they talked about how they're not going to be handing out special invitations as easily. So I wonder if in that five-month window, you're going to see Flex Lewis jump in a men's open show to attempt to qualify for the Olympia. So that would be something pretty exciting if we see Flex compete before the Olympia. Then you've also got guys, like I said, Ian Vier, Hunter Labrada, Akeem Williams, Rolly Winkler, Cedric McMillan. I'm sure I'm missing a few, um, but a lot of big name guys are not qualified yet. And like now you guys see there's a very short window of time for them to do so. So you're probably going to see that happen over the summer. Basically, May to September, that leave just the summertime to qualify for the Olympia. So I think while bodybuilding news has been kind of slow over the past couple months for the beginning of the year, I think the summertime is going to be jam-packed with bodybuilding shows, bodybuilding news, new Olympia qualifications, big wins, big placings, bodybuilders that a lot of people want to see compete, competing and winning shows. And I think it's going to be exciting, a very exciting and a very short build-up to the Olympia this year. But I think it's going to be a fun kind of roller coaster turn of events going into the Olympia this year. And now, a word from our sponsors over at Built Bar. 
All right, guys, today's video is sponsored by Built Bar. Now, I was pretty excited for this sponsorship because Built Bar is not your average protein bar. Even far before they ever offered to sponsor a video, I tried this a couple years back, um, and they're a really unique, really flavorful bar. And the unique flavors are really what attracted me to this brand initially. They've got flavors like orange. That's a flavor I remember trying a few years ago. Mint brownie, peanut butter brownie. I already ate all the peanut butter ones out of there. Banana nut bread really surprised me. That was pretty good. Caramel brownie, carrot cake, cherry barcia, coconut almond, coconut cookies and cream, double chocolate, raspberry, salted caramel, toffee, almond, and more flavors. And I'm not just saying this because they're sponsoring the video. Even the fruity flavors mixed with chocolate that you might not expect to be good really impress me. And every one of these flavored bars is under 200 calories, and most of them are in the 17 to 20 grams of protein range. So if you want to try one of the 18 flavors of Built Bar, click the link below. And if you want to help support the channel, click the link below because these sponsorships help out a great deal. So give Built Bar a try. You won't regret it. Now, next up in the news, I wanted to discuss Sean Roden. Sean Roden still training. It seems full steam ahead um, for potentially an Olympia comeback. He posted these training videos and many other training videos recently um, on his Instagram page. But something that really caught my eye was one of the training videos that he posted on his Instagram story. He tagged Chris Aceto and he also tagged the Mr. Olympia official Instagram page. So I thought that was an interesting tag because by all apparent accounts, it seems like Sean has been kind of blacklisted for for lack of a better word from the olympia no one's really talked about him in an official capacity um he hasn't competed since 2018 whether or not he's been actually physically prevented from competing or not um it really looks like they're waiting to see the outcome of the court case before he does compete again um but it looks like it's interesting to me that he would tag the olympia instagram page in his recent training videos and it's interesting to me that recently um, he's been posting a lot more training videos than usual, getting back into the swing of things. Maybe Sean Roden is making a run at a contest prep for this year's Olympia. I don't know, man. I think it's really fascinating that Sean did tag the Olympia page in that story. And I think there is a chance that we could see Sean Roden at this year's Mr. Olympia if his case gets resolved. Now, next up in the news, I talked about this briefly in the community tab of my channel, but two recent updates from the 300-pounder, James Hollingshead, who is already qualified for this year's Mr. Olympia, so he has basically this entire time to focus his preparations and focus building his physique specifically towards the goal of the 2021 Olympia. He doesn't have to worry about qualifying. He doesn't, worry, he doesn't have to worry about other shows along the way. He's got his sights set on the O. And he is looking fantastic. I've got to say, for a 300-pound bodybuilder, um, his physique has really impressed me. It impressed me at the British Grand Prix. It impressed me at the Europa Show, the conditioning that he brought, the size and density that he brought. I think he is going to be a real contender at the 2021 Mr. Olympia. And I think he's going to be a guy, a dark horse guy, that maybe not a lot of people are talking about going into the Olympia this year. Um, but he's got the size. He's proved that he's got the conditioning. Um, and he's got the physique to place very, very well at the Olympia. So don't be surprised if not a lot of people are talking about James going into the Olympia. And you see James in a spot like 6, 7, or 8 in a top callout at the Olympia. It would not surprise me if James is right in the mix at the 2021 Olympia with the top guys. I would even go as far to make a bold prediction this early on um, that I would be surprised if James isn't a top 10 Olympian this year. I would predict that James would be in the top 10 at the 2021 Mr. Olympia um, based on who's qualified so far and based on who probably will qualify, I could see James in that top 10. And frankly, if he brings conditioning like he brought at that Europa show, I would be surprised if he's not in the top 10. But let me know your guys' thoughts on James' physique in the comment section down below. Now, in other fitness industry news, Bradley Martin, social media fitness influencer. I think, I think Bradley has done actually a really good job um, of bringing mainstream attention to the fitness side of things because Bradley comes from that background. He's done a really good job of collaborating um, with other influencers and brands outside of fitness and kind of bringing them over to look at some of his fitness stuff and get more involved in the fitness industry. Um, and recently, he went to a UFC event this weekend with Steve Will Do It and the Nelk Boys. And he actually got in the octagon with Steve and put on quite the entertaining show, throwing Steve around and manhandling Steve in the ring. Um, and I just wanted to give a shout-out to Bradley Martin because I do think he's done a very a very good job um, of, of bringing his fitness brand to the mainstream, which is something I would like to see more of. Um, and the collaborations that he's done, I think, like I said, um, he's done a really good job of extending the branch um, from fitness to these other, these other uh, 
avenues. Like typically you wouldn't draw the connection between a channel like the Nelk Boys and a fitness channel, a fitness influencer like Bradley. And I wanted to give him props for what he's been able to do as far as uh, the outreach that he's had with his brand. I think it's pretty impressive. Now, next up in the news, another physique update from Seth Ferrosi. Seth Ferrosi, I think, is teasing a comeback. I mean, I know that he said before that he doesn't have the intention of making a comeback, but I always say never say never, and I got to say, I think Seth right now, I know he's dieting. I know he's kind of working on a transformation, and he's coming back from that tricep injury. I think Seth's physique right now looks better than it's looked in a really long time. Um, and honestly, looking at these physique updates, I think Seth still has every bit of the physique to step on stage in like a couple weeks. If he continued dieting for a couple weeks, I think he would do good in a 212 show, even though there's not any shows in the near future. I think Seth has the physique still to compete in 212 today, right now, and place well. He's still got the size. He's got a fantastic structure. He's got a great vacuum pose, a small waist, a great V taper. I think Seth has still got it. And like I said, never say never. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Seth on stage again. He doesn't have to make a serious Olympia title run or anything, and I know he's already got you know all the money in the world with his businesses, but I think for fun, if he jumped in a random 212 show, didn't necessarily take it crazy serious and make a run for the Olympia, I think he could do pretty well, and I think his fans would be entertained. Just putting it out there, I wouldn't be shocked if you saw Seth step on stage. And the final story that I have for you guys today, Brian Shaw. I know Brian Shaw is also working on a little transformation of his own. Um, he's been dieting lately. You got kind of a physique update from Brian, which is rare. A front double bicep shirtless from Brian Shaw, the four-time world's strongest man um, that I'm assuming is still planning on making a run for number five. But I know Brian has teased before that after the 2020 world's strongest man competition, he has teased that after his strongman training, he would pursue possibly competing in a bodybuilding show just for fun, obviously, just to see how lean he could get, just to see how good his physique could look on a bodybuilding stage. And I still think that's something that would be incredible to see um, and something I would like to see Brian work towards. Um, I don't know if he's going to do it or not, but right now, um, for Brian, he looks like he's in pretty good shape. And maybe we will see a definitive answer to the question, could Brian Shaw have been a bodybuilder? So that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed already. Please give this video a thumbs up if you did, in fact, enjoy it. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. And as always, Nick Strength and Power, signing out.